What a huge moment for Mikel Arteta and this Arsenal team. There are so many little dots to join up throughout this, so many narratives to weave together, and so much satisfaction of just tiny little things that you can pick out, but massive impacts and long-term stuff that really we deserve a little bit more respect for speaking about for such a long time in this community, but also just in the Arsenal community in general. Welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel. It's good to have you guys. Arsenal have gone through against Porto on penalties, and there is... Still a bit to unpack. I mean, first of all, let's just talk penalty shootouts, right? It couldn't have gone more perfect for Arsenal. Ramsdale was obviously the narrative goalkeeper for this one. Would you have subbed on Ramsdale in this? Probably not if you're Mikel Arteta, but if you're another Arsenal fan and you want to see Ramsdale sent off with a big moment or you want to see something go right for him, then maybe you wanted to sub him on. But they stuck with Raya. Probably the right decision in retrospect. I love, and this is what I'm going to bring up throughout this uh, video, the old Steve Job quotes of you can only join the dots backwards. Our job on these channels is to try at least to join them forward. So I'm going to try a little bit with that. If we go back and you see the trajectory of the dots, it's that Ramsdale is on the way out, but that Raya is also very much the first choice for Mikel Arteta and those guys. Not only do they see a goalkeeper that they can use already, but probably better suited, if not slightly more predisposed to work in a Mikel Arteta system, they also, and I think this is what a lot of people don't see, see the potential to raise his game in other areas. Now, I'm not saying therefore any goalkeeper is a bad goalkeeper at penalties if they've not saved all that many penalties before, but obviously, narratively again, Ramsdale was probably that guy for them, Community Shield, etc., etc. He comes in and he does, I think, honestly, I think Raya has been part of that diamond at the back. Those two centre-backs, Declan Rice, who dropped back a little bit more this evening, uh, especially after Jorginho came off, and then David Raya. Really ran the penalty area. I think he made some amazing saves. I think tonight, overall, he was probably one of Arsenal's most consistent players in that back line. I'll talk more about that in a second. Anyway, he comes in, and, you know, some people say, well, he just consistently went to one direction. Yeah, there's some research done here. People in goalkeeping coaches deserve some credit for the research they do on players. Little moments they can snatch. What foot is that guy going to kick it with? All these kind of things. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still a little bit sick. Anyway, narratively, right? We go back to the old, oh, you know, Raya, is he really that kind of goalkeeper? He's really super suited to the Ar Arteta thing. Arteta has, and Arsenal have to explore this idea that they have this principle, right? And they have all these principles, and they are great principles. They have clearly grown under Mikel Arteta. But in the Champions League, they're going to be challenged against teams like Porto, right? Because teams like Porto are going to do everything they can to level the playing field. Sure, they're a big club in relative terms to lots of other clubs, but they're also not able to compete financially or in terms of resources with Arsenal. Just not nothing to do with Arsenal's fault, just purely because Arsenal are in one of the biggest financial leagues in the world. Of course, they're going to be ahead in other aspects of Porto. They had the guile, and you know, I know that we're, we're probably talking about average ages. There's going to be loads of chat about average ages tomorrow. Arsenal started with an average age of 26.1. Porto, average age of 26. There will be someone on some pathetic podcast that brings it up tomorrow and goes, well, this Arsenal team aren't all that young. They should be performing. Porto weren't all that more experienced. The key moments, the key places, they were more experienced. And there are different kinds of experience which are going to mix up to try to make a cocktail which of experience. That's not only the manager, that's also Pepe in the back line. That's a midfield where there is some guile and some. Uh, they know what they're briefed to do. They know that they're meant to go down in certain moments. They know that they're meant to try and frustrate that stadium. They know there is nervousness around Arsenal. Anyway, back to Raya, right? He was very consistent this evening, and actually I really appreciate that consistency. I think more recently he has been a lot more consistent. Of course, he couldn't be consistent in the Brentford game, but every other game he can be more consistent. That really helped them tonight. And the fact that he's proven himself in a penalty shootout gets rid of yet more issues. Where people go, oh, is he really consistent enough? Is he going to be good in these areas? Because they think of him as a very specific kind of goalkeeper. They think of his weaknesses. They try to pick at some of those things. Rai's just moving all on from those things. Two saves. Probably should have been three in this penalty shootout, though that's probably unfair. I, you know, when I say it should have been three, that's not a criticism. That's like, yes, he went the right way. It felt a little bit, um, you know, unfortunate that he didn't save it. He got a fingertip to it. You wonder how strong a goalkeeper's fingers are. Probably stronger than, you know, like climber level of fingers. Anyway. Point being, this penalty shootout again goes a little further narratively. <clears throat> it, it is genuinely unusual to me 
that Arsenal fans support in the way that they do. They're a great fan base. There is a lot to like about this Arsenal fan base. Sure, there is an image issue, which online, the banter club thing that they're kind of moving on from. And I get like they should be more confident than they are. But even then, that moment when Saka stepped up, he kind of felt the air go out of the stadium and people be like, oh, there's a narrative here. Is he going to overcome it? Great penalty, really confident, stepped away. You could see there was almost like a moment where they sort of went, so he did score. And I, I like that, right? But there are just moments where you feel Arsenal could be just a little bit more confident and they could be like a little bit more Arsenal, if that makes sense. I get you're refinding that identity. I get that you're still tentative because you haven't lived through these things in very recent years. You are just almost relearning to be a fan base that support this level of club. You are remembering what it is. Some people for the first time learning these things are sort of going, oh, that's Arsenal. But they're still a big fan base. And Arteta knows that they can lean more and more and more into this. Anyway, point being, I think the penalty shootout was good for this Arsenal fan base. It allowed them to release a little bit of that tension, especially after this game where a lot of people were complaining about the ref, probably rightly so, though. By the way, I love a ref that lets the game just continue, kind of lets the players get into it, steps in when he needs to. Arteta looked bothered by it, but sometimes your team can buy into it, sometimes they can go against it. And it kind of played into a good narrative. Pepe was kind of leaning into that, though it got to him at one point. He was the player playing Trossard on side. And seemingly down the other end, Saliba and Gabriel also had a slightly nervous night, I felt. There was like a bit of trepidation to the way they were playing. There were times where you thought, okay, could you guys be just doing just a little bit more here? Maybe it was because Jorginho also wasn't having one of his best nights. There were a couple of times where he felt he was not quite on the pace or that they were pacier than he was. And that's always going to happen at some point. But they overloaded just the right area. Is. Again, Arsenal got away with it. You can learn from these things for that next round. Look at the strength of those names in the next round, but not necessarily the strength in the moment. I think, again, Arsenal can go through and they're capable of beating anyone in this competition. Teams have stayed, like, it's not going to be just one kind of play for the rest of the competition. It's not just going to be that you always play this way in the Champions League and you always play this way in the Premier League. You have to cut your cloth accordingly. And this is why the modern manager... There is a there is kind of a weird thing for them, right? Like they have to have these principles. They have to have the uh, high, mid, and low block, right? And they have to have ideas in each of these areas. They have to have ways that they can play against each of these, but also ways they can play in each of these. There is frustration, I'd imagine, from most managers in that they know that they're capable. They have the players that are capable. But if they come up against a certain system, it's like, okay, they're going to cancel us out here. And after I did my big prediction on this channel, on one of the vlogs where I was like, I think Arsenal could go all the way, at least to the final, because in the final, it's just a roll of the dice, right? But the point being, loads of people came to me, especially people who know about Arsenal, TDK, and lots of other Arsenal creators saying, actually, what worries me is the low block. What worries me is certain kinds of football. Porto, so Portuguese sides, fair enough. There are very, a lot of innovative coaches there, but also into Milan. Those guys will sit in a certain way, break in a certain way, change shape in certain ways that Arsenal just aren't used to. And Mikel Arteta will need to adapt in those moments. Arguably, Mikel Arteta adapted after that first leg. I think it takes a lot of mental fortitude to even get through two ties, especially if you're someone like Arteta and you're a team like Arsenal, who is still kind of learning to play in these ties, still kind of learning to face off against teams like this. And especially when I, again, I kind of come back to it. Pai Havertz is a fantastic player, but you know, when Je Jesus came on, there was a slightly different dynamic. Trossard, fantastic player. Could you have done with Martinelli tonight? Saka looked not, I, I think it's unfair to say he didn't look brave. I think there are a lot of times where he went past his man, he drove at them, he drove past them, and they kind of gave him the space to do so. But then they cut off the passing lanes after that. And I think Arsenal kind of, they didn't go, okay, well, we're, we're not good enough to get past that. They kind of went, well, we need another route in. And I think they've done fantastically in melding that side, in Ben White, Odegaard, and Saka, but then also bringing in another midfielder, bringing over other bodies to try to make those numbers work. The little passes around the corner, I thought, working very early on. And Trossard's goal, as much as it was the only goal in the game, I actually felt that it was on more often than not, right? So I think there are multiple things that Arsenal had in their locker here. And actually, I think the tension in the stadium fed in some of the negatives that 
ultimately came from the game rather than the positives. The good thing about those negatives is they seem temporary. They seem like there are things that they can learn from. And you could see that Arsenal knew what they were going to be up against. An element of patience was needed this evening. Raya gave that interview post-game, obviously, as one of the heroes, but also speaking about what they knew they were going to come up against against this Porto side, how well-drilled they were, how they knew where the passing lanes were against this Arsenal team, how they knew they were going to exploit certain avenues anyway, how they knew they were going to be called into action at certain points, because they weren't always going to just be able to go, okay, it's going to be all dominance. And Arsenal, I think the narrative is they should be all dominance. It's just wrong. Lots of people are going to be pointing out this game as weaknesses. And I'm sure there are plenty of managers out there that can find plenty of weaknesses. But there are lots, every big side has a weakness right now and, and very evident ones as well. So doing it to Arsenal, but not to other teams seems disingenuous. Again, Getting through this tie, getting through this stage is another big tick for Mikel Arteta in this side. There are lots of positives to come out the other side of it. I genuinely thought Odegaard gave a captain's performance this evening, not only in normal time, also in extra time, but also just stepping up, doing that first penalty, being the guy to go, I'm just going to step up and be the guy here. I think it's something we should appreciate. I think it's something that Arsenal should be calling out and saying, hey, this guy put in a captain's performance this evening. You forget that this guy has been through disappointment after disappointment in his career in relative terms. Who he signed for so early on, where he had to go, where he had to prove himself. Maybe those aren't direct disappointments in the way it's like, oh, it's just going to be here. But it's the, the pressure that builds up with these young players over time can just slowly grind you down. You saw that. Marco Grujic is playing for Porto at this point. Really good player, but someone who was touted to be one of Europe's next big midfields. He went to Liverpool. Things don't always work out. Sometimes those things can kind of take a career away from you. And we're looking at players who are thriving in the moment. I love it. I get it. Like Saka was frustrated tonight and there'll be people with lots of criticism. Yes, he was trying to drive in certain areas that at times just look frustrating. Porto are a frustrating team. At the moment, the Portuguese league is incredibly uh, tactically diverse, incredibly tactically innovative. Guess what? They're going to be able to observe Arsenal and play well against them. I still see Arsenal against the big teams playing well. I still see them being able to take things from Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, especially Barcelona, especially other teams who are going to be tactically really smart, but at the same time, come up against an Arsenal side who've learned just from this tie alone that playing over the two legs is a certain balance, that if you play it away first, you need to get a certain kind of result, that actually they were probably hard done by in that result. Coming down the other end, of course, I'll go back to the nervousness. I do think they're a little nervous. Partey was on the bench. Could they have brought on someone else in that time? I was looking at the bench and thinking they did only make three subs, a few of which could have been made maybe a little bit earlier. I, I was looking, could a Tommy Asu maybe have come on? Maybe we like Ben Mark, but could Tommy Asu have come on? They brought Zinchenko on. He seemed a little bit nervy. He's really changed his demeanor more recently. Is that down to what Arsenal have been doing or is that down to a lot of things that have been happening off the field for him as well? Again, not saying he's a bad player, just trying to be empathetic towards him. And when I went to look at the bench, I actually thought, variation off it was difficult to come by. Reese Nelson, Fabio Vieira, El Nene, Smith Rowe, one of those names could have come on, but at the same time, maybe Arteta knew what it was they wanted to consistently do. I think this Arsenal team actually had a pretty solid formation throughout the evening. I think if they kept plugging away, they knew the side that they needed to go to was that right-hand side. They knew that they needed to be a little bit more conservative on the left because they were going to get attacked down that side. They knew, to, knew they needed to protect, tuck inside and work the ball through the middle there. Try and attack one side of this Porto team, which, yeah, actually... One side of it did have Otavio, and guess what? They attacked that side a lot more. Of course, you were going to do that a lot more than the Pepe side, the Dark Arts, all those kind of things. You see that as the game progresses. Mikel Arteta has a very clear game plan, a very clear idea, and it, they kind of just kept on those stress points. He had the faith in the system, but also the faith that if they just kept going, a game of attrition was going to play out. And guess what? They, they won on a knife edge, right? But they came away with a win. That's all that matters in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Getting through against these teams like Porto is probably a bigger challenge in relative terms than getting through against a team like Munich. I actually think they'd suffer less against a team like Munich than they would against a team like Porto. And that's a weird thing to say. Obviously, now they have like, what, 20 days, 19 days where they won't be playing any football as a unit. And that's then I think they come back against... The F in the FA Cup or something. So even then, it's like, you know, you've still got a little bit longer until you come back against what I think Mikel Arteta and his team would consider to be a truly meaningful game. But, you know, there are going to be players leaving, players going away on international duty, all these kind of things. 
I think now Arsenal are going to try to have another Dubai, not in the same way they go to Dubai and do something, but try and have another Dubai where they come back together, work on the next tactical progression, try to surprise teams in the final 10 games of the season, try to push to the max, try to recover players they actually need to recover. There's still a lot of injuries within this side that they can bring back players from. And if you look at like, They've got Martinelli out, still Yuri and Timber to come back. There's a couple of players, I think, on the bench tonight who are still trying to work up to match fitness. So, you know, when Jorginho went off, could you have bought an apartheid? There's things like that. Again, another night where I looked at Declan Rice, and I just want to finish on this, and went, guy's world class. I think there are so many different aspects to his game, and he is genuinely everywhere that you kind of go, right, this is... It's kind of ridiculous now when you see him driving past players out on the wing. You see him dropping into the Jorginho role or that six role just in front, shoring things up a little bit later. You see him anticipating the play exceptionally well. You see his combination play, supporting someone like Kai Havertz, who didn't actually have a particularly good night, did have times where he looked quite isolated. These are all things that Arsenal can learn from. Arsenal will be learning from. Arsenal have already learned from. I'd like to talk to the Arsenal fans now. Tell me what the atmosphere was like in the stadium. On TV, it appeared a little nervous. On TV, it appeared like there was a tentative nature to the way that you guys were supporting. It's not criticism, it's just an observation. I'm not saying it was, but I want to know what it was like in there. You could see, obviously, they impacted the penalties, the booing and the, you know, getting on the back of the others, but also the Arsenal fans were feeding off some of the reaction. Love that. On the opposite side of that, during the game, were well, there times where it was a little bit nervous? It started out very high energy, but when Arsenal didn't score the goal, it seemed to drop off fairly quickly. I've witnessed similar things at Anfield. Was it like that at the Emirates? I kind of want to know. Let me know in the comments below. Big night for Arsenal. Big night for Arteta. Big calls made. Tactically, I think he got it right. This was always going to be a tight one. They were never going to run away with it against Porto. Let's not like just put a blueprint on this team and go, you need to play like this. Arteta's a much more complex manager than that. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below and I will uh, chat to you guys probably tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I'll be doing a little bit about the Champions League, doing a little bit about the Champions League draws. Vlog's coming back later this week because obviously you can see my throat is better, as is my cold and the flu or the pneumonia that I was told I was walking around with. Anyway, appreciate you guys. Thanks for all the support. If you've not already hit the Patreon, obviously help support the channel. Sorry I've been sick over the last few weeks. I hate saying sorry for being sick. And then obviously there is a Discord there. Go hit it and see you guys in there. Love the chat, love linking up with you guys. Chat to you much, 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 much sooner than you would think. See you later, bye.